Hey guys, and welcome back to Daymare 1998. When we last left off, we had just fought Caster, uh, the Caster Hades Amalgamation, or whatever the hell it's called. Let's just call it Liv. We fought Liv downstairs, and uh, apparently, uh, you know, he got better. So, there's a scientist dude that's going to try and stop him for us, but, well, we wish him well. But we're going to continue trying to escape, because that seems to be the more um, pressing matter right about now. Uh, we're, we are extremely close to the end of the game now, so let's just keep pressing. Come on, Raven. The end is finally in sight. We've got a couple of interesting sections coming up. Um, they are... Oh, fuck me. Look at this guy. You Stiffly piece of shit. I don't know what that means, but means he's dead now and we're not. Which is good. You know. Uh right. So we're gonna be switching over to the new stuff. The good stuff. The stuff that we've been basically saving for the entire game. Look at these guys. Oof. Gets gets worse here. Gets way worse. They're just like standard bullets. Yeah. Standard bullets, man. Standard load ain't for every road. That's true. And it's definitely true here. Let's get the light on. Evening. Get the fuck out of here. Sit your ass down and shut up. Daddy's in town. This bit is rough. There's our old friend. He's angry. He's pissed off. But luckily at the moment he's very slow. I gotta get out of here immediately. Now we have to do a QTE here. Which, not gonna lie, really sucks. But he's gonna like slowly drag his ass towards us. At least for now. Now, we've got all these explosive gas tanks all over. We're going to have to use those as and when we need them. But that's not yet, so we're good. What we need to do is unlock these doors. And then once we've unlocked those doors, we have free reign over this place. You would have thought I'd know AS... Uh, ASD, that we off by heart, but dyslexia, dyslexia is a harsh, <laughs> harsh mistress, and it doesn't work like that, chief. So let's get going, shall we? I think by the time we get this far, he's actually started running, which is bad news. But the worst thing about this situation is he now has a one hit kill. If he catch, yeah, there you go. If he catches us from now on, it's a one hit kill. But they have added like a cool little, uh, you know, death animation finisher. So I can appreciate that. You really, really, really need to be quick here. Um, as soon as you've unlocked that final door, that I think that's when he starts running. Can't really remember exactly like his uh, his pattern but I think it's something like that now from doing some digging in the old forums on the interwebs a lot of people actually gave up here um, you know rage quit whatever you want to call it and I can kind of see the, the problem but the thing is like it is honestly it's really not that bad once you understand how this works kind of like um, him in that last chamber you know a lot of people said that, that it was so difficult it like actually ruined the game um, I, I, I can kind of understand what they mean but again like once you realize how that section works it's really not that bad at all you know there's a very easy method to defeat the guy okay now I think he's gonna start running at us which is problematic now shooting these 
Uh oh, that's bad. Shooting these will actually slow him right down. But, oh, there's my alarm going. I can actually hear him. Actually hear him now running behind me, which is kind of concerning. So we're just going to knock him down. We're going to grab that and we're going to activate the elevator. Now this elevator... Oh, what? You saw that. He was actually down, unconscious. But I... I okay, so here's what I'm thinking with this bit here. I think because enemies don't have any frames between standard state and attack state, I think because he had already started his state to get up, he was already up. Um, you know, there's no iframes or anything like that. That is really bad game design. Or maybe it's not even bad game design, it's just lack of, uh, you know, programming experience. So, let's try that again, shall we? Right, let's try that, shall we? Try that once more with feeling. As we like to say around these parts. Let's get rid of him. Yeah, man. There we go. He's gone. So now what we've got to do, we've just basically got to stall him until we can get out of here. Which isn't that bad. It's just a case of waiting him for him to get close to us. And then blasting him. Which, you know, only takes one bullet in all fairness. As soon as he gets close, you just... Oh, oh, that didn't work. Nope. Oh, 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 um, right, let's just run. He doesn't stay down for long, as we've seen, but that's okay. He doesn't need to stay down for long. He just needs to stay down until we can get in and beep the boop. Yeah, so that section's a little bit of an ass, but it's it's not too bad. Anyway, after narrowly escaping, uh, narrowly surviving his last confrontation with the monster who was once Special Agent Lev, Raven finally reaches the rooftop of the dam where he prepares to contact Salmon. Once the self-destruct device is initiated, he won't have long before the entire edifice explodes into a thousand pieces. Again, this is true. But... Let's get our gun reloaded. And our shotgun reloaded as well. Because we're about to face off against the final section of the game. How much health do we have? 81. We're actually fine. Alright. Yeah, this is literally the final fight. Major, I'm on the roof of the dam. The Citadel's been overrun. I repeat, the Citadel's been overrun. The whole situation's foobar. No survivors. Hold on. No. Uh oh. There's no way. Leave. Leave it. Stop until the end. Raven. Raven. Respond, goddammit. God damn it. Well, luckily, the good news here is we've just got to straight up fight him until, until he dies. The other good news is there's unlimited ammo around. So we don't really need to worry about ammo. There are zombies around, but we don't have to worry about them too much either. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. We don't want to get grappled by these guys. And I don't know if leave here is a one hit, uh, one hit kill. I'm not 100% sure of that either. That thing there has unlimited uh, ammo in it. And we want that unlimited ammo. You better believe it. That's going to kill us, isn't it? Yeah. This is the problem with explosives. 
they have an absolutely colossal explosive area. Uh, so I don't like to rely on them. The good news, of course, is you don't have to rely on them. Oh. Okay. You know what? Let's just use the shotgun for now. Because like I said, um, the shotgun actually does, with the slug ammo, ooh, is actually more powerful. I don't know how much more powerful it is, but apparently it's more powerful. So that is what we're going to do. We're going to go with that until we're out. Come on, you sack of ugly shit. Let's go. Now, these zombies, I think there's only ever two at a time, which isn't actually as bad as it sounds. So as long as you're careful and you don't fuck up like I did, you're okay. But that's the rub. As long as you don't fuck up. Now, these slugs, in theory should have quite the range on them because they're slugs whether they do I don't actually know here he comes they don't actually seem to have a spread pattern like a slug I'm going to be honest in fact absolutely not come on let's get a couple of Action Express magazines just to tide us over and we're using the standard shotgun shells as well which is not what we want yeah <laughs> there we go now we're using the good stuff okay cool alright good 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 I mean, I say we're using the good stuff. We've still got to actually reload, which is the problem. There we go. There we go. That's why we get paid the big bucks. Right, let's... Ooh, fuck you, you little skinny cunt. Uh-oh. Dump that mag. Run. Wait for him to attack. Run. 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 There we go. Oh, that's okay. We can take that on the chin. We can take it. Right, let's go grab some more AE magazines. One, two, Three. Okay, we got three. That's fine. Get off me. Get off. No, 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 no. You're not here to bite me, friend. Quite the opposite. I'm trying as hard as I can to reload. Right. It's very difficult because when you're pushing all the buttons that you need to run, you can't... Uh, ...select weapon and reload, which is curious. It's definitely a curious choice. Not a choice I would have made. But then there's loads of choices that this game makes that I certainly wouldn't have made. Anywho. That's him. Nice one, kid. You already put that shithawk in a fucking coma. Major! Major! That's hard to believe. I didn't think Leave could get any nastier than he already was. Come on, we need to get out of here. The dam's gonna blow. Right, we better hurry. Major! Behind. No, 
day, kid. Not today. You've already risked your life far too many times. This time, only one of us is walking away from here alive. Well, kind of a cool scene, truth is but undeniable. poorly written. Fortune favors the bold. I accomplished my mission at the first light of dawn, and for once in my existence, the best plan was to not have a plan. Right, okay. How the hell did you? Where? Oh no. Sorry to disappoint you, kid. I guess the great Sandman ain't so great after all. But after all of the lies lost, at least I managed to save one. What's going on? By all rights, you should be dead. And you're not. Wait. What? Did that to you? That fucking guy! Don't touch me! Stay away! Leave! He turned me into this freak! The antidote! I need it now! This? Give it to me now! Are you alright? Did it work? You bastard! You remember me? You... You mass-murdering piece of shit! I will never forgive you for taking her away from me! What? What the hell are you? Drop your gun right now! You fucker! You killed her! Why? What did my baby ever do to you? Hey, whoa. Whoa, calm down. Too many people have died already. Why don't you drop the weapon so we can talk about it? Whatever happened, it's over. It's over. No! It's not over. Not by a long shot. Not until this... this guy pays for what he did to her. Listen, listen. I don't know you, sir. But you can trust me when I say the man who did all this is dead. The Major's a hero. He risked his life. He risked his life? Huh? For what? To murder tens of people? Including my wife? Huh? I was there, soldier boy. I saw what he did to her. My baby. Now, I suggest you get the fuck out of my way, or you can go to hell with them! I'm not gonna tell you again, sir. Drop your weapon, or I'm gonna shoot you where you stand. No matter what you think you saw. Stand down, Raven. But stand down. It's you, isn't it? Samuel. How do you know my name? Because I know more than what you think. But the only thing you really need to know is that I'm truly sorry. I never meant to hurt her. Not intentionally. Your wife, she was one of the few people I could really count on to. What's that supposed to mean, huh? Huh? Who, who are you people? He's the one who ripped my arm off and broke my neck, baby. While you just stood by and watched me die. No, that's not what happened. That's not how... That's not... She's dead! Sam, baby. Are we really gonna argue over semantics? <laughs> just look at yourself. You're nothing but a frightened lab rat. Shut up! That's all you want. Shut up! That's all you ever want. Shut the fuck up! Just shut your mouth. Samuel, I... Stop! Just don't say another goddamn word! These people know everything about you. Fight it, Samuel! They used you for their advantage. No! They this isn't real! You She's dead! Any property. Don't listen to her, Samuel! the moment you were born! Damn it! The voice isn't Sarah!
Hmm. So, what could have actually been a pretty interesting dynamic between the three of them, uh, it's, it's just, <laughs> it's just so poorly written. Um, yeah, and unfortunately it doesn't really have any weight to it. But, we're going to find out a lot of more about Sarah, and well, uh, she's been playing the field a little bit. She's not just Samuel's wife. I guess that's probably somewhat obvious. Now, we don't ever find out uh, what happened with um, Sandman and Sarah. Uh, we don't, I, don't, I don't know if he actually did kill her or not. I suppose that's up to um, your interpretation. I mean, maybe she was a zombie when he got there. I, I don't know. Not sure. But um, that's one of the game's problems, that it doesn't really fill any of this stuff in. And we're going to skip all this, because we're on a time limit. And as for the gunshot, I don't know who died. <laughs> Sam and Sarah. But we're going to find out a little bit more about her now. In the epilogue. But there's her arm. And it looks like it's had the chip removed. <gasps> so we get this like first person section now. But why would Sarah have a chip? <gasps> Gene signature confirmed. Welcome back, sir. Boot up the register. Ready to receive. Mission report K731. Personal code FG nine five six five zero six one. Mission status completed. The material requested has been recovered. Of those involved, there's no one left. At least no one who knows what's really going on. I erased all traces of K's involvement. Hexacor Biogenetics will be blamed and held accountable for the mishap in Keen's sight. Good job, sir. So where are we now? We're in Kusun Kusunosu, which is not Hexacore. Hmm. We're apparently a cleaner in a another part of the world in Japan with another faction that has the same jellyfish and there's the chessboard that we've seen in the cutscenes before mmm interesting and actually I'm not even taking a piss when I say that it's, it's, it is actually kind of interesting um, but anyway let's go look at the last section of the game So we've got four pieces of evidence now to look at. Sandman fired first. Evidence number two. Intercepted voice messages mm. of Major Sandman Vulcan. Voice message with encryption code XDR00035. Sarah, I would have liked to speak with you in person, but I'm afraid that's just not going to happen. So this is it. The moment has arrived. You know, I told you that I'd do whatever it takes to protect her, and now I gotta prove just that. Prove it to myself, to you. Mostly prove it to her. My precious little angel, Samantha. Exactly. 
exactly seven days. My man and I will be deployed to the Aegis Labs to recover samples of Castor and Pollux. After which, you know what I have to do. Oh, I know what you're thinking right now. I know. So many innocent lives lost to save just one. But she's my baby girl. So listen up. I want you to leave Keen Sight. You and your Samuel. Get as far away from the city as possible. The gears of destruction are already in motion and nobody can stop them now. And even if they could, I wouldn't let them. So, if one day my conscience does feel a little less guilty, it'll only be because I've not only saved my daughter's life, but yours as well. I know you know what it means to truly love someone every fiber of your being and the choices you got to make to hold on to that love to be with that person and share one last day one last minute one last tantalizing second <sighs> i couldn't live with myself knowing i didn't step up and do something even if it means burning in hell for eternity <sighs> that should come easy compared to a living hell without her Hmm. So Sandman orchestrated this whole plot Today's just to save his daughter. Sarah Carmichael's reporting to Sam Walker. Hmm. Sarah Carmichael, a. Eh? The tape that we saw right in the beginning. I've been waiting for this day to come. Missing. Wishing I didn't have to tell you the things you're about to hear. Yet, here goes nothing. The more elaborate the lie, especially one as grandiose and brazen as this, the more difficult it becomes to explain. I should have waited for you to come home, to speak with you in person, but I just can't do anything but record this. You won't be home before dark, by which time it'll probably be too late. There's a good chance they'll come here looking for me. <laughs> they. I guess you're wondering who I'm talking about. What I'm about to say will change your life forever. Change my life, too. What's happening, one way or another, was inevitable. But at the cost of many thousands of lives, it will also mean the end of our relationship. Listen to me. By now, all of Keen's sight is lost. He... He did it. He infected the whole goddamn town, sentencing the people here to a fate worse than death. He committed a truly unforgivable sin. The last hope for a crazy man being puppeted by even crazier people. The Kuronosu Company. I still don't understand how he could have done it. How anyone could have done it. Even him. Especially him. God damn you, Kuronosu. Hexacore. Damn you both to hell. Oh, Christ. We're just a bunch of filthy murderers. All of us. What I wanted to say, if I wasn't a coward, is that even though I've always loved you, I've never been completely honest with you. Beneath this city, behind your disease, lies a tangled web of secrets linked to the company. I would have told you sooner rather than being obliged by this tragedy, but I couldn't and wasn't ready yet. I was afraid of how it might affect us. Sorry. 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 It kills me to tell you this, but I'm not who you think I am. You already know that I work for Hexacore, but what you don't know is that my job isn't limited to mere administration. 
My field of expertise is actually the supervision of research studies, monitoring one of our most important tests, you. For decades now, our government has been experimenting in its own backyard, testing chemical weapons on an unsuspecting America. The project is called Truman, and Keensight is one of the most illustrious testing zones, with Hexacore overseeing the whole shebang since the 40s. You, and hundreds of others like you, are the end result of these tests, and we've been tasked with keeping you in check and gleaning as much data as possible about your condition. I can attest, however, that it took very little effort for you to become the most important part for me because... because I actually fell in love with you and it wasn't just a job for me anymore. So when someone asks if I love my work, I tell them, Thanks to you, I do. And maybe that's why I've never had the courage to tell you before. And more importantly, I would never leave this place without you of my own free will, if given the choice. Hold on. I hear something. There... There's somebody out there. Evidence number four, ID tags of Sarah Carmichael, Hexacore Biogenetic Supervisor, code 27. Hey guys, Future Titan here. So I am editing the last section of the last video and it looks like my microphone cut out here. Not really sure why, but um, so I'm adding this in post. It's it's going to be a little bit awkward to put my th final thoughts uh, of this game together because, well, I, I think I played this and finished it like over two months ago. So, yeah, well, well, ah, fuck it. We'll give it a go anyway. Uh, <laughs> so, um, I'm going to read out this text anyway. Uh, I believe this is the big um, revelation at the end where you're like, <gasps> oh no, Sarah was a bad person all along. Who would have thunk it? And then you've got the Kuranuso uh, company that is also behind the scenes lurking. Um, yeah. Uh, like, <laughs> I don't remember a huge amount uh, like that about the intricacies, but... <sighs> I guess it didn't have much of a lasting appeal on me. Um, anyway, so June 20th, 1991. Uh, I did it. I'm finally in charge of one of the most important research studies in the country. It took years to perfect the Truman Project together with those yes men at Hexacore, maybe longer to convince that Washington Washington DC dinosaur Murphy to put me in charge of the whole operation due to their backwards way of thinking. I was either too young, too girly or too black. But in the end they had no choice but to recognise the crowns of my achievements. In under 30 days I'll be transferred to keen sight from what the company tells me. It'll be a one way trip and maybe, just maybe, that's what excites me the most. Aha! And now I'm going to have to like fast forward my video here. Turn the page. There we go. January 4th, 1992. I've only been here a few months and I think I've already tucked myself snug as a bug into this rural community. Sometimes I feel a little bit sorry for the people of Keen Sight. Or maybe it'd be, or maybe it would be better to refer to them by their proper names, guinea pigs. Other times, I envy them. Their simple, small-town lives filled with small-town values. After all, the company ensures that they're safe inside their giant Petri dish. Closed off from all the shit of the outside world, I'd like to think that I too have helped to create a sort of paradise 
here, or perhaps another circle of hell. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, kind of a shitty thing to say when <laughs> you're like envying these people, even though you're, you know, um, committing yeah, horrible crimes and r researching them and mutilating them and experimenting on them. Yeah. Yeah, you can see this Sarah character is kind of a fucking bitch and deserved everything she got. But anyway. Anyway. So. Let's continue, shall we? Uh, the most difficult part of the Truman Project is officially underway. Or at least in regards to my active role in the field. All research stationed here must have frequent contact with subject in order to control it. And I'm no exception to the rule. Indeed, I'll have to lead by example. At any rate, tomorrow I'll meet my special to be monitored and judging from reports, it's clear that this one will possibly be the most important part uh, in the whole study. I'll have to be on my best behaviour once again. Meanwhile, I've been scratching at my arm for days. Just because everybody got the same chip integrated into their arm doesn't mean it's a good thing after all we're researchers not guinea pigs the government is experimenting on with the program unfortunately however these are the rules of the game and i can't back out now nah oh got a little chip in her arm oh well, someone's gonna remove that chip later yeah man wait for the page to turn there we go uh, January 7th, 1994. Oh, Jesus. I haven't felt this good in years. The Truman Project is proceeding as planned. Not to mention the experiment, too. I just can't hide my excitement thanks to the work I've been doing on my subject. That being said, this isn't exactly an official report. So I could say my subject, Sam for short. The person I've been tracking and recently approached. Well, I'm starting to think something peculiar is happening. I know I shouldn't get this attached, but the company's asked me to get closer, and the heart wants what the heart wants. Damn it. Go back. <laughs> oh god, this is so bad. Um, the heart wants what the heart wants. Where's the harm in that? Mm hmm. Yeah, because fuck Sam. Fuck playing with Sam. Who is he? He's just a maggot, right? Uh, May the 4th. Ooh, May the 4th. Uh, 1994. With the recent transfer of high-level personnel to the new office space atop the dam, we find ourselves butting heads uh, with the men from the Hexacore Special Units. Mind you, Hades agents look like rock-hard war machines who seldom interact with anybody outside their circle. And the HRF pilots seem to be normal kids despite their demanding tasks. The company often gives them, uh, though one in particular seems to be catching the attention of all the office ladies. His name is Hayden, though everyone's been calling him Sandman after the mishap in Groom Lake. I have no idea how he made it out alive, but I'd like to know more. Oh, Sarah. One man's just not good enough for you, is it? September 22, 19... 94. Hayden. What an extraordinary man. Oh god, even I'm getting a bit hot here. Oof. Even in the face of the difficulties he's endured, somehow I got him to open up about his past again and discovered that his wife left years ago because she couldn't bear the weight of his job. Oh, that's fresh. Um, she even left him to take care of their only daughter, baby Samantha. I really feel some kind of connection with this man. So much so, in fact, I'm feeling exactly what I'm feeling for Sam. Now, how to deal with this? My only time, uh, only time will tell. I should probably just concentrate on my work. Yeah, he should probably do that. August 15th, 1996. I thought I could handle it. Instead, I wish I'd never gotten involved with this pile of poo. Out of writing there. Uh, I've been working on the Truman Project for the company for four years now, but it looks like this isn't going to end the way I thought it would. 
We didn't come here to improve people's lives. We came here to test weapons of mass destruction. If that wasn't bad enough, even though we've signed away our lives to these hexacore bastards with their government lackeys, they still won't lift a finger to help us, any of us. Aiden told me his daughter contracted a terrible disease and requires an experimental treatment that the company just won't cover. That's why he's been so distant in these past few months. I want to do something to help. I'll always feel close to him forever. In the meantime, at least some good news came from all of this. Sam asked me to marry him, a beacon of hope in all of the darkness that surrounds me. A reminder that there are more important things in life. Now I know who my heart belongs to and, I would n and who I need to devote my life to him. I need to do my job as effectively as possible to make him feel better. Yeah, that's this is like so scummy. I mean, f forget the fact that it's not exactly written well, <laughs> like the rest of the game, but it is so bad. Um, I like the way she was just waiting for one of them, any of them, either of them to present a rock. Whoever presented that ring first was the guy that was going to be tapping it for the rest of the, her life, I guess. Either this hero hunk of a man who's a, a loving father or, you know, the guy that she's performing savage experiments on. Either or, really, I suppose. Right. March 28th, 1997. I don't want to believe it, but Hayden asked me to meet him just outside town to reveal a scheme. There isn't much time left to save his daughter, and the only way he can do it is by committing an act so utterly despicable it borders on nefarious. It seems that Caruso Noso, a inter uh, an international pharmaceutical company, made a deal with Aiden to save his daughter in exchange for the destruction of hundreds, if not thousands, of lives, along with Hexacore as a whole. Worse still, it brings it'll bring our government to its knees by revealing the truth about experiments on the American people that have been ongoing for decades. He must have lost it, completely freaked out. Nothing, not even the loss of a loved one, can justify such a stupid, reckless decision. I'm pretty sure those bastards are using him. I just don't understand why the hell he doesn't see it. I need to talk some sense into him. I'm sure those are just words of a desperate father. But if he doesn't listen to reason, I'll have no choice but to report him to the company's internal affairs department. Though I don't know if I could live with what they would do to him. Well, he's on about committing genocide to the whole country. I mean, exposing the government, sure, why not? Go for it. But, um, yeah, killing, like, thousands of innocent people. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's some, that's some serious Wesker vibe there. Uh, <laughs> that's fucking shit, isn't it? It really is. Anyway the page to turn your yeah, man uh, I know this probably uh, is not gonna match up like my voiceover is not gonna match up to the text but it's like 20 to 9 in the evening and I've, I've been at work for 11 hours so we're just getting this done dirty July 14th 1997 Hayden left the base and took a few days leave sadly his daughter Samantha didn't make it her little heart gave out just two days ago. I feel sorry for him, but this could be a blessing in disguise. Now he won't have any reason to enact that nefarious scheme of his. From what I gather, he's got a long journey to the medical center where she was being treated. Though I'm sure he'll come back soon, and when he does, I'll be there to support him in whatever way possible. Oh, Sarah, you piece of shit. Bear in mind, she's married to Sam at this point. Uh, you know. And, uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> there's the big information revelation right at the end of the game. Um, and that, as far as I'm aware, actually completely wraps up this game. <sighs> so, final thoughts, I suppose. It was... <sighs> I mean, it was trash but 
it was entertaining trash. You know, I would assume this is what it's like to eat out of a garbage can. And, um, you know, as you're digging through the shit, you actually find a somewhat fresh burger, I guess. In my sleep depraved brain, that's about all I can come out with. Um, I enjoyed it. I played through it twice. It's not the worst game that I've ever played. Far from it, you know. With games like The Ring and um, that... Oh, what was it called? That uh, other one we did. The Evil Within. It was it? You know, it wasn't the Evil Within. The Evil Within wasn't too bad. Uh, it escapes me now. Clock Tower. That's the one. Yes, that Clock Tower too. Absolute. Now, I mean, when you think of trash games, I mean, those are the sort of things that comes to mind. This wasn't to be completely written off. If this came out at a very reasonable price, I think it probably would have been worth a go. Um, or if, you know, one of your friends gifts it to you, it's probably worth a go. Uh, and there is some fun to be had here. I mean, it is extremely basic, but the combat, it does work. And um, the story is just a about enough of a carrot to you know keep everything rolling nicely and the story is just so insanely written and so insanely voice acted to a degree you kind of want to keep going you want to see how it turns out at least that was you know my um, thoughts on that regard um, now I finished it twice I, I'll never touch this game again I don't see the point you know, um, it, it, you got a good amount of game for your money as well. I mean, second time round, apparently it took us 15 hours to finish. 15 and a half hours. Um, I like what they did with the puzzles. They tried, even if they were a little bit janky. And it could have done with a few more, I think. They completely dropped the ball with the um, written dialogue and, the, you know, the diaries. But we know that. You know, I'd like to give them the benefit of the doubt and just say it was translation issues. English wasn't their first language. But if you're putting a game out like this and for this sort of price, you probably should have got somebody to proofread it. All right. Um, and I think that's where I'm going to leave this now. Sandcastle has come out, which is actually the new Daymare, right? Came out a couple of months ago. And this Saturday, and I can say this Saturday because it's planned and it's already done, it's already ready. We're going to be taking a look at the demo for the new Daymare, which is basically, well, nothing basically about it. It's a prequel to this game. It's set before it, it's about, you know, what happened in Groom Lake. Now, without spoiling too much, I've only played the demo. It is a massive, massive improvement. I think it possibly is still going to be in the so bad it's good category, but we're talking a massive step up. All right, now we're going to hold our hold our judgment until we've actually played the game which we will play in 2024 but anyway that's gonna do it from me thank you very much for watching guys thank you very much to reaver of jill sandwiches for supplying the game and as always i'll see you next time